Welcome everyone to our chapel chat for Tuesday, September 8th. This is the uh, feast of the birth of Our Lady, uh, our Mary, and so we will have the shorter ver version of the gospel, which is Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 23. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When Mary, his mother, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with, be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as Father said, this is the feast day of the birth of Our Lady. And the only three saints, or three people that we celebrate their birthdays, would be Mary, John the Baptist, and Jesus, because they're such crucial uh, examples of the Christian life and had played such a big role in, in the salvation of the world. And uh, I, just part of what struck me as we were praying about this was how important devotion to Mary is mm. in our tradition. Mm -hmm. And it's so frustrating when people talk about how, you know, the Catholic Church is so patriarchal and, and all these things. And, and whenever folks are really hung up on that, I just wonder how much they really know about devotion to Our Lady, because this is a huge part of our tradition, so much so that it's even sort of a stumbling block to other denominations. Right. Other, other Christians think we worship Mary and that it's like this unhealthy focus on her. Uh, and obviously it's, it's different from the devotion that we give to Jesus. He alone is the Son of God. He alone is part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet, Mary is the prime example of what discipleship looks yeah. like. She was so uh, docile to the Lord and, and surrendered her whole life into God's hands and so persistent in her faith despite so many difficulties and trials. And, and she was the temple of the Holy Spirit, like in the most literal way. I mean, the Holy Spirit is the one who conceived Jesus inside of her. And that's sort of a model of what we're all meant to be. We're all meant to carry Jesus in us through our faith. One of the things that strikes me too about devotion to Mary is that sometimes um, people will take Our Lady and they'll say that, well, she served her role, and mm -hmm. then let's, that's it. Yeah. Right? As if somehow God was just looking for some place to land, like a landing yeah. strip or something. Like, yeah. Oh, like, he loves her, and he was preparing her to receive the, this gift. Like, it was right. in and through her freedom, right? right. So, so Mary is Jesus' mother. Right. She's our mother because of that, because we are one with Jesus, right? So the birth of Mary is the birth of God's preparation. It, it's like, it's, like it's, it, it's happening. Mm -hmm. The very mother of God has been yeah. born into the world, like the anticipation. And, and yet this is not just any old person. This person becomes our mother. And so we rightly celebrate the activity of God in the Blessed Virgin Mary because the activity of God in the Blessed Virgin Mary is, is a foreshadowing of the activity of God in and through the church and yeah. in and through the life of, of the church, right? Yeah. So it's the church honors her precisely because she said yes yeah. and precisely because she, is, she has become Jesus' mother. The very flesh of Jesus he gets from Mary. Yeah. And there's that Ave Verum Corpus, that beautiful hymn that sometimes our choir will sing, which really is like this hail true flesh, right? right. Of, of, of Jesus is really the flesh of Our Lady. Yeah. Right? Like, think about that. The very flesh uh, that nailed our, that flesh that was nailed on the cross, that took our sins, he got from Mary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so, like, the honoring of Mary is actually follows from our honoring of Jesus. Right. And just that. You know, that, that thing you mentioned, how some people think Mary served her time and now like it's time yes, just to right. move on for it. It, it totally does not at all uh, come in line with our understanding of the eternal lives that we will have in heaven, right? That's right? I mean, God is in this relationship with Mary, certainly in a profound way while she was still on earth. But where do we think she is now? Like, it's not like she's no longer existing. Like she is still in heaven in that unique full relationship with God. In fact, she already has her body with her. She's the only one who was assumed into heaven bodily. None of us have our bodies in heaven yet, not even John the Baptist. We will one day at the end of all time when we're 
when the resurrection of the dead takes place. But right now, Mary is bodily, <laughs> which is mm-hmm. kind of like mind-blowing to think about that, in this eternal embrace of God the mm-hmm. Father with Jesus, her son. So that relationship that she had on earth is absolutely still yeah. present. And to deny that in a certain way sort of leads to a denial of the resurrection of the body or denial of heaven in some way. So it, it, it doesn't make sense to try to say that she just served her time and that's right. Yeah, That's right. Along. And she's a she's a Jesus wants us to have a relationship with her. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and at the cross, Jesus gives to his disciples what mattered most to him. Yeah. And that's his his mother, yeah. right? I mean, in life, he he wants to offer to us what was such a gift to him yeah. in life. And, and I think sometimes we can forget that that Mary is not just she doesn't just serve instrumental value. Yeah. Like I'm going to go to Mary in order to get my prayers met. Right. No, she herself is someone who is loved and someone who is loving us. Yeah. Like there's a he wants us to have a relationship with her. Um, Moving to the, go- or the gospel that we just did, sure. one of the things that struck me was, was the, the character of Joseph here. Hmm. Right? Joseph, the righteous man, did not want to expose her to shame. Yeah. And we know, we know that in the ancient world there were two steps uh, to marriage. There was the right. betrothal, uh, which happened way before the actual wedding, in, that, right. in which there was a consummation after the wedding. And so they were betrothed, right? And so they were chased, right? Yeah. And, and he found out that Mary's pregnant. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I can't go through with this. It would right. be shameful for her. It would be shameful for me. It's, a, it's against the law if she was yes. to get pregnant some other way. But as a righteous man, what does he do? He wants to do it quietly because he doesn't want to expose her to shame. Yeah. And just think about how, how beautiful that is because sometimes when we find out about someone else's sin, we find out our proposed sin, we find yeah. out about someone else's proposed you know, fault, we sometimes broadcast yeah, it. You sort of delight in it. We do. We delight in it, and we just say, "Hey, everyone, this person has fallen yeah. in this way." Or this yeah. and like, there's a. We live in this culture that it's like a shame culture. Yes. Like we we, we even like chant shame, shame, yeah. shame, or or we we just expose. Like there's this, like this is I don't know. There's just something about like, look, if she's done this wrongly, I'm gonna do this quietly. I don't want to expose her to shame. Yeah. But he was incorrect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was just. It's amazing how the angels were involved and. And that definitely relates to a sort of interesting uh, paradox in the Christian life. It seems that the closer you are to the Lord, the more you're aware of your own sinfulness, yep. and therefore the more merciful you will be to others That's exactly when right. you encounter their mercy. So I think it's no surprise that in our totally secular world today, as we're drifting away from God, we're rejecting the idea of sin itself and sort of falling into this, this extreme... Uh, self-righteousness so much so that when someone's sin does become public it's like this huge uh, ordeal and it's you know cancel culture is all about that right it's it's exactly trying right. to get rid of people because they've they've defied some sort of, uh, of uh, cultural expectation or whatever and it totally goes against as you were saying this example we're given in Joseph who was a righteous man that's right and that's actually the brilliance of and uh, in, in a proof of Christianity yeah. I mean an attempt to live without God you still have the same reality of sin yeah. that is trying to be canceled, right? Yeah. You have this uh, this corporate guilt, this shame that has to be removed, and and there's and so, like all those elements that people deny in Christianity are now coming out. Except there's no redemption. Yeah, there is no forgiveness yes. where people make with sense. There is no redemption. There's no yeah. mercy. It's all like merciless. We're going to cancel you. We're going to do all, yeah. all this stuff is again the very things that are involved with Christianity but right. when you deny God you deny the Savior yeah and therefore all you're left us with is sin guilt condemnation and shame the very thing that Jesus was uh, was sent to save us from right it's almost like this religious uh, this religious worldview that's taking over but without God and as you said without redemption that's because man is religious our yeah. as as yeah. human beings we are religious creatures and when we reject god we create our own religion yeah which is one of the reasons why there's um this is it's just so difficult today yeah and what we're experiencing well let's pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen lord jesus we thank you for giving us your mother mary thank you for her witness of what it means to be a disciple to give her whole life to you in service to your will. Mother Mary, we ask for your intercession that we would be like you, that we would say yes to the Lord whenever he invites us to be part of his work, that we would rely completely on the grace of the Holy Spirit and his power within us, and by this grace bring forth Jesus into the world. 
so Lord we offer these and all of our prayers to you in your most holy name Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.